um, to begin with, um, some of the things you want to think about before you set up your e-commerce website is once you start selling things, you're sort of taking on addition, additional responsibility. Like you're taking people's money, you have to do something there for it. A transaction is required. And some of the things that you want to think about before you set your site up are your merchant accounts. And I highly suggest you use authorized.net or an authorized.reseller. Um, they, they, they seem to have the best platform and tools and you'll have to buy them through what's called a reseller. And uh, the reseller is basically the one that's managing how much they take from you per transaction. There's this funny thing called the discount rate, which is basically what they take off the top. <clears throat> so uh, if you are a high-risk transaction, you are going to pay a higher or give them a higher discount rate. Um, if you have a little terminal that you got at Costco and you're taking you know, credit cards over the phone, you have a very low liability, low risk, therefore you'll have a lower rate but that's not e-commerce. This is about an online transaction. Online transactions typically are high risk. So that's why it might cost a little bit more to do this. <clears throat> Next, you also need to get a cert or an SSL certificate. I use fairly inexpensive ones myself. Um, basically, what these do is they you're buying someone's trust that your server is the domain, your server and its IP address are the true responsible owners of, or hosters of the domain. So therefore, the cert allows you to do HTTPS and therefore guarantee that this is a legitimate transaction. So that's another thing to kind of think about before you even get started. Um, you want to have sort of all this stuff worked out before you start taking your money or taking people's money. The other thing you want to get worked out ahead of time before you get too far down the road is you want to think about how do I ship my products. So uh, some of these things are a little kludgy at first to, to get set up, but you're going to want to set up an account with the USPS, uh, also with FedEx and U uh, UPS. And by doing this, um, you'll have immediate access to the shipping APIs that give you real-time shipping quotes when you um, put products or when people check stuff out. So those are the sort of things, the administrative things you might want to take care of before uh, you get too far down the road. So with that said, I'm now going to demonstrate how easy it is to set this up. So um, what is Ubercart? Ubercart is essentially um, Drupal with the ability to transact or to have a shopping cart. So cons consider Ubercart Drupal's you know, shopping cart or basic you know, e-commerce system. It, it, it provides basically everything you need out of the box to do online transactions. So first and foremost, just think of simply as Ubercart as the shopping cart for Drupal. So now I'm going to uh, install Drupal and install English language. I already have a settings.php, so that's why I didn't have the key in my hook to the database. Let's just type in some stuff here. So I just installed Drupal. Um, let's take a look at our new site. The first thing we want to do is enable the modules to do this. And I have, I'm running this locally as you can see, but um, in, my, in, my, in my Drupal folder here, if you look inside of sites, all, modules, these are the modules I'm going to demonstrate today. And they're basically pretty standard. There's nothing too weird in here. In addition, all the required modules that Ubercart needs are listed on the Ubercart project page. So if we go to drupal.org slash project slash you can see, uh oh, am I not in? Project Ubercart. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> okay, well, that's funny. Um, on the Ubercart project page, you will find all the required modules. So it's not like you have to, you know, just communicate. It's not that hard to set up. Okay, so let's go to load these modules now. 
And uh, this guy is very handy. It you know, allows this drop down so you can cruise around. I'm going to enable some of the content construction kit stuff. I don't I think I'll use all these data in my demo, but I'm just going to load them up for you to see. Maybe that, I don't know. Um, next, we're going to enable path. Um, I'm not going to do calendar yet, but I'm going to do date. Date API. Date pop-up. Date tools. I think that needs that too. We're also going to do the image API. Put this guy on. Image cache. Image cache UI. Uh, this guy. This guy. This guy. And this, um, later you, you're going to want to have Google Analytics on there. Uh, so you can keep track of what people are doing on your site. It's awesome. This is where you get into Ubercart. There's the Ubercart core. So you just check all these things here. Okay, next um, are attributes. Attributes are like um, color or size. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of a demo of file downloads later. I'm not going to do the payment stuff yet because I really want to show you how to get the thing set up and then transacting is a whole other thing and there's lots of documentation on that. The question is, what about catalog? Um, Ubercart has its own sort of thing like views. Um, I tend to render my product catalog with views, so I'm not going to enable that just yet. Uh, there's also stock, Ubercart views. Here's some of the fulfillments that are shipping. So here's where you get into some shipping API. So here's uh, USPS, UPS. If we downloaded the FedEx Ubercart shipping module, you would see it right here. Here are your payment APIs. So if you had an authorized.NET account set up already, you would just simply click this, type in your account and your transaction key or something like that. You basically need two numbers, and it works. Um, also enable views. This and this, and then hit save. And if there's anything I forgot, any module dependencies will be detected and loaded in a matter of seconds here. And just like that, rock in. <laughs> I think what's going on here is I've now this should have worked. Okay, let's fine. Let's just clear this up. Okay, so so far so good, right? So now we have. Uh, the store administration menu. Oh, by the way, this, this menu up here is, is called Drupal administration menu. It's a module you'll need to put on your site, but it gives you fluid access to basically everything here, okay? Um, in addition, there's a thing called content construction kit, which you'll begin to see. Who does not know what content construction kit is? Okay, awesome. That's great. That's really good. Um, the content types, as you know, list are listed right here. And uh, Right now, there's this thing called product. And so off, off the bat, Ubercart writes its own content type known as product. OK? So let's begin with um, creating. Um, so let's go to create content now. <clears throat> we'll select product from the list versus page or story. And why don't we, oh, by the way, we are making a website for a rock band, OK? That's what we're doing today, OK? So why don't we make the first thing um, like, like a t-shirt, OK? So let's call this, uh, let's just call it t-shirt, OK? OK. Uh, this is the description. OK. And then next we have uh, an, the you know, option to upload a, an image. So I'm going to click Browse. And then here's my Uber Tour shirt. I'm going to click Upload. If I want to put some stuff in here, I could say, you know, Uber Tour Fair. Okay. And um, let's put a sell price of 20 bucks. This is a shippable item because it's a physical thing you purchase. And let's say it's going to weigh uh, a tenth of a pound. Well, you know, that's you can also do by other things, but I, I'm going to use pounds. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So let's hit save. Oh, I forgot the skew. Thank you. So uh, the skew will be t let's call it T-shirt 01. Uh, for skews, I tend to like to use, um, there's an auto skew, uh, like Path Auto. There's also an auto skew uh, thing that you might want to check out. But it's best to really think about 
your SKUs ahead of time. Just don't arbitrarily, you know, make them up because if you put logic into how your SKUs are structured, you could look at a SKU and say, oh, that's a green tire or something. Or, you know, it helps if you don't just arbitrarily set stuff up if you put some structure to it. So now I hit save and it's been created and I could be, it's, it's getting there. So now let's put some attributes in, okay? So if we go to attributes here, there's nothing, you have to, it says you have to add them, okay? So it just, you know, let's click on that, see what it says. And so we're now going to click, um, oops, I'm going to go to site, store administration, attributes, add attribute, okay? And so let's make this first one called size. Okay, hit submit. Now let's add options to it. So we're going to go add option. So it costs first one small. And if you like, we could also put in um, price overrides in here, but for now we're not going to do that. Uh, medium submit. Large submit. Okay, great. So now let's go back to this t-shirt product type and then notice it now says size here. So I click on size, I click add attributes and just like that under these options you can now see these things have already been set up. Okay. So now let's go back here and let's type in, let's add some more attributes like color. And options. It's got red. Submit. Green. And let's put the green. Maybe the green are, are like five bucks less. And let's make blue. Okay, submit. Come back over here to our attributes. We're going to. Um, Add more. Now we're going to add color. If I had, you know, so basically every time you have an, a, something you haven't added yet is a, a, it is a visible in this select here. So okay, add attributes. And now you have size and color. Let's put size first, so I can change the order as well, just like that. So now if I go to options, you can see that they're all visible here. Okay. So what does this look like? Um, a couple other things we need to do. Uh, we need to set up um, some of this stuff. And I'm not sure the exact order, but I, you know, sometimes you just simply need to sort of click some of these settings. Um, image toolkit. Okay, looks like it's good. So now let's see what we have. Hey, for attributes? Yep. Can you set up dependencies where one attribute has certain aspects based on another attribute selection? Where, like, I mean, so savings, you know, typical color style size, right? Mm -hmm. Can I have style affect what colors are available for that style? Uh, I think... The short answer is no. Yeah. Um, the long answer is we're working on that actually for a site right now. I hope we have to make it work down the road. But mm -hmm. that's called hierarchical attributes. Yeah. Um, you could technically do that with a custom module. Some people have done it with some JavaScript and things like that. But Core doesn't support it out of the box. Gotcha. OK. So um, by the way, that's Mike Connors. And uh, he's part of the Commerce Guys. And I also like to introduce TR. Um, OK, sorry. I'm not kidding. Targo's Pizza, sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, Targo's Pizza, um, He's, are you a code contributor number three or number two? You're about number three? Yeah, three. 2.5, 3.4, well, you know, very. So you should give props to this guy because he's putting a lot of the code in here that makes us work. And you're, you, guys, you, guys, you guys do some stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah. we do a, a Yeah. All right, so right now I'm an anonymous user. I'm going to click Add to Cart. Oh, I wanted to sh actually... Let's um let's try that green thing to see if that works. So let's let's do a medium and let's do green minus five bucks, fifteen bucks. 
Okay? So just like that, I have a shopping cart that does stuff. Do you see how simple this is? Okay. All right, so it's a rock band. So we got t-shirts so far. We could do posters through the product class or product product class is the best term, but think of it as content type. What if we wanted to uh, sell concert tickets? That'd be kind of cool. So let's come over here and under store administration, there's a thing called product manage classes. Okay, so I'm going to click on manage classes. And by the way, notice in content types, you only see page, product, and story. Now let's add ticket. Okay. Location and date. Thanks. Now, if there, if this, you know, this is going to be pretty fast. What we're doing. I would also add the location module, do a node wrap, and load no, no, load locations as that. But uh, you know, I only have so much time. Um, okay. So now, if you take a look here under content types, you notice this ticket. Cool. Okay. So let's reach in here. Let's go to manage fields, and let's add a new field. Um, called uh, date. So we could do a pop-up calendar. Okay, cool. And uh, I'm not going to click on too much stuff here. There is some configuration required, but that's fine. If I go to edit um, under the uh, submission form settings, why don't we? Okay, so normally. The title field, in this case, I'm going to override and call location. But the cool way to do this would be to, um, again, use uh, no node reference and location and, and then create a location like the Staples Center or the Cow Palace or something like that and then pull that into here. So it's a mappable object. And then if I hit delete on this, that'll admit that field there. So I hit save content type. OK, great. So now, um, the other thing we might want to do too, because tickets, um, tickets won't really take a image setting. So I'm going to hit none on here. That's another way you could reach in. There's sort of a couple ways to hook, you know, grab out images in Uberheart. All right. So now let's go over here. Go to create content and ticket. So location. We're going to call this uh, loss. Uh, that could be omitted. We don't really need that. SKU, let's call it a ticket. The 2009 uh, 0831. Tickets are, let's say tickets are 30 bucks. It's not shippable. Where's my date input? Oh, there it is. Okay, well, I could, I could have scooted that up, but for now, you see that I'm just hooking this in, right? Uh, and save and continue. All right, cool. Now, let's add some attributes to this. So let's go back to our um, to our, our attribute selector. So let's go to Store Administration Attributes, Add Attribute. And let's call this Ticket Type. OK. Let's get to Options, Add Option. General ad, admission. Okay. Submit. Let's add one more called VIP. And the price is another 15 bucks. Okay. <clears throat> Great. So now we have this new option here, okay? Or attribute. So now if I go to attributes. I'm going to add an attribute, and notice I get all three options again because I haven't selected anything yet. You know, before we covered size, color, but we only want ticket type for tickets. We don't want to have a large or a green ticket. You know, it's just ticket type. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yep. Um. Well, we're doing this all out of the box. So um, if 
I mean, I'm just sort of showing how to fill this stuff out. If you had, I mean, there's lots of ways of theoretically automatic, automatically rendering a, a store, but I, I really wanted to kind of illustrate that it's this simple and you just simply put stuff in. Okay, but um, we can go into some more stuff a little later. Okay, so now, they had save changes. Uh, let's come back over here to our, to our store. And uh, so we got our t-shirt, as you saw. And now I can do my VIP ticket. So now I got a $45 ticket in my shopping cart. And one thing that I'm hoping that you get um, is that if you see how I can append CCK fields to a product class, you, you see how you can do other things with this now. You reach into Drupal. I could then load calendar and have an events calendar and have this product item or product node visible for purchase. Does that make sense? Okay, good. That's kind of like how this is really Drupal with a shopping cart. It's just you have to think about it a little differently because you have to first create your product class, which then becomes accessible through the content types. Okay? All right, cool. Let's do another um, uh, uh, product class now. And since it's a website for a, a rock band, they, they make music, right? So how about we do an album? Okay. And uh, so let's create let's create content. And let's do an album now. Let's call this guy. This is uh, my girlfriend Yasi helped me with this name this morning. I said, uh, "What would you name this album?" She's like, "Fat Bastard." So <laughs> that's his name. Bastard. Oh. All right, and then let's call it an album. Um, FB, whatever, and it's fifteen bucks. And it is shippable right now. Save and continue. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you could select through, um, like with, with an attribute, like size and color, wouldn't it be cool if you could select whether it's a CD or compact disc you download, or you, you order as a shippable product, or if you did a file download, if you want to just listen to it right now. Well, with Ubercart, you can do that. So let's first set that up again with our with our friend here under uh, attributes, and uh, we'll call it um, album type. Okay, and then let's go to options. Uh, add option. Compact disc. Okay, and it, let's give it a weight. So let's call it, you know, you know that 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 much, you know, two tenths of a pound. Let's also do another one called uh, download. Submit. Okay, great. Let's go into this and go under attributes. Add att so you've seen me do this a few times now. You see how it's like you see how it all kind of like hooks together. So now let's go to album type. Okay, and now if you go to options, you see that they're both visible. And if you go to adjustments, I can also do a skew override here. That's kind of important to remember, is that this is, you know, a skew is a skew is a skew, it needs to be unique. So for this area, we're going to call this compact disk, and for this area, we're going to call it download. Okay. So now there's this thing called features, and this is where you hook in the uh, file download stuff. And um, if you take a look at this, um, we haven't really set this up yet, okay? So if I try to hit add, it's, it's going to say, hey, you got to set it up first, you know? So let's go take a look what it says to do. So come over to project features. 
Found download settings, and it says what what's up with this? It says don't don't put it in your web your web root. It needs to be outside your web root. So let's go take a look at look at our install. So uh, this is where it is. So if I go, my 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 web root is HTTP docs, and so next to it. So in other words, if I go CD, that's Drupal, as you know. Okay. So if I go up. And then inside of downloads, that's where I'm going to put my downloads. And I actually already have a file called cats.zip in there. So that's my path. Let's copy this because I'm lazy. Copy. Let's put the path in there. Hit save. And uh, if you have like a large file to upload, you might as well stick it up through secure FTP or something like that. Uh, if it's a small file, you can use the web interface to upload new file uploads, but if it's a big honking file, just, just put it in the back door and then Ubercard will find it. Okay? So hit save. Everything's cool here. Now let's come back up to options. Uh, I think it's over here. So let's go to features again. And I want to hit add here. Now check this out. This is kind of important. You see that? Okay, so it's album fat bastard download. Oops. Wait, one second. This links it to that. And if I type in C, it's gonna say, oh, you must mean that file you put in there. So you know if I had other files, I would find those as well. And it's not a shippable product. And so just like that, um, you can create I mean, so just to review, um, a t-shirt, which is a standard product, okay, then you have a ticket, which is, a, which is tied to an event system, so that can be displayed through uh, calendar view. And now we have an album here where you could, um, you can download it. So if I go like this to download and click Add to Cart, it says you currently have privileged to download this. So if we were to check out, that would be available on our user page. And to do this, you need to configure the conditional actions. And I wanted to sort of share my presentation with uh, Tar Targo's Pizza. And he's going to come up and help me do that. Because I always screw up when I do this. So do you want to help me do that part? Uh, sure. OK, cool. All right. A quick question about the SKUs. Uh -huh. So I noticed that it preserved the master SKU before I got to the Album. Is that because you have it set up so that you don't necessarily have to select an attribute, or is it always going to preserve like a master skew, like a style master, and then various other sub skews based on the attributes you're selecting? Um, I believe if I so th I believe this. So do I need to make those sub skews? I think uh, I think a product node had is requires a skew. Okay. You have the option of having sort of sub skews or additional breakouts from that for attributes when you hook them through. But we can't actually sell the ALB skew right now. We have to sell an ALB dash DL and ALB dash CD, right? Um, can you? It depends on whether your attributes require or not. Okay. You can have required attributes and not required attributes. Yeah, that's basically what I was asking. Yeah. Like, can you make it required so I can not sell an ALB, but I can use an ALB as a master skew to do stuff? And the other important thing to remember is, is that virtually all, right, on, all accounting systems require these things. Right? The yeah, file yeah. thing is a bug. Check your file downloads that you have already. Okay. And that shouldn't be there. Why? I put it in. Well, but you didn't buy the yeah, file so yet, right? Because you shouldn't have access to it. Okay, well, can you get it so that when I check out, see, see watch this. I gotta check out. Uh, so they have 6,000 times of passive stuff. Oh, like that's why, because you're an office. Yeah. Okay. I should log in. Well, I haven't, I haven't transacted yet, so that's the conditional option is going to say how to put it in. Yeah, do you have test gateway set up? What? Test gateway? Uh, no, we can enable it right now. You should do that. Okay, well, come on. Come on, we do this. Okay. All right, so uh, this is Targo's Pizza. And uh, you're gonna, you, you, who, knows, who doesn't know where that's from? Do you ever watch that show, Mystery Science Theater? 
Yeah, I work with the guys from Mr. Science Theater, so that's my that's my handle. Um, Do you want any of that module for you for a sec? Uh, which one? The test gateway. No, I can do it. Okay. So we're going to uh, enable the um, test payment gateway so that we can actually. Um, oh, the module needs to be enabled first, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'll do, it for you. do you want to tell them what we're going to do, and I'll do it for you? No. Uh, okay. Sure. Okay. So explain what you're going to. We're going to. We're going to. What we're going to do is we're going to actually make it go through the actual hoops it needs to go to. So uh, we need to enable the test gateway so we can actually pretend it's transacting. Test. Let me find out my signal yet. Test gateway. There you go. Okay. Cool. All right. Save. Okay. Now. Um, we need credit card. Oh, you need credit card as well. Right. Um, yep. Yeah. It does. So you know, if you need, if there are dependencies, it, it it's going to take care of it for you. All right, so now you're in there, and then do you want to go to uh, conditional right away, or? Sure. Okay. So there's a thing in here called conditional actions, and uh, yeah, you can see uh, uh, with Ubercart, um, I'm not part of the core development team, but I know enough. Uh, conditional actions was kind of a um, what would you say, Mike, like an interim solution while the uh, rules and actions system for Drupal six wasn't quite where they needed it to be. So uh, right now they have this conditional actions which is sort of Ubercart specific. And if you take a look, um, it sort of drives a lot of the events that take place uh, when a user checks out or when a user makes a payment or when an order is updated to a new order status. And um, Mike's given some uh, some really good presentations on conditional actions in the past and hopefully we'll have some some more once uh, Ubercart 2.0 gets released. So. A couple things that you need to have enabled, which you can see they, they kind of already are, this renew purchased files, which will basically allow a user access to a file once the checkout uh, has completed, once they've at made a payment to their order. And the other thing you might want to have enabled is this notify a customer when a file is granted. Um, a lot of times a user might not know where to look to see whether or not they have a file download enabled for their uh, for their user account, so so in uh, notify customer, we'll do that one. That's probably the simplest. Um, so let's see. So it's enabled. So basically, the conditions are when check the current date. Is that right, Mike? <laughs> um, okay, so. So let's actually set this up. So we want to notify a customer when a file is granted. The conditions we want, you would probably want to set up when the order status moves to completed, um, which if we go back one step to our other conditional actions, an order status on full payment, the status gets updated. In other words, if you pay with a credit card and your checkout is completed automatically, this event will fire to update that order status. So a payment gets entered for an order is the trigger. What's going to happen is the order balance is going to be checked to see if it's equal to zero basically so that means it's a full payment and you can choose you know if you'd rather have uh, other options you can choose those here of course mm -hmm. and you also might want to check the status. Normally when a payment gets entered the default status that it goes to is payment received. So now your action um, will be to update the order status. Now, I, for our purposes, we usually say, well, payment received is great, but we want to know that the order itself has been completed. Um, you can also add more uh, order statuses. If, for instance, you're shipping a product and you want to know that the order has shipped, you can have your store administrator go in and say, OK, now that this order has shipped, I'm going to update that status to shipped, for example. So. Let's say that we want to update the order status to completed when uh, a payment is made for an order. So we'll save those changes. Now we can go back to our list of conditional actions here. And to email an order update or to renew purchased files, let's do that one because that's the most important, especially when you're selling downloads. So the when the order status gets updated, as we were just discussing in the previous conditional action, 
Well, the question is, what is the order status we want to check? And as you can see, and that might be something that we want to change, um, right now it's set to completed by default. So that may be something that we want to check going uh, right when we start at the very beginning to make sure that the order status that's listed here is the same as the order status that a uh, full payment is going towards. So when an order gets um, fully paid off, you want to make sure that, that those two order statuses are the same. And now the action is renew the files. And that's pretty self-explanatory, and that's good to go. So if we look at our cart, which you don't have a cart block, which is, let's do that real quick. Well, Not to no, step on your toes here, but one thing that people love to see on an Uber cart slash you know, any shopping cart site is what they have in their cart. So really easily in your block admin interface, you can say shopping cart. And let's add it to the left sidebar so it's highly visible. And you can see there are some other blocks that Ubercart pr provides, uh, or this is UC Views probably, uh, popular products and uh, uh, new products too. Let's add that one. Why not? And we can have that below our shopping cart right at the top. So let's save those blocks. And there you go. So our, shop our shopping cart right now contains no items. And uh, what's that? You guys use one. Oh, and I'm user one right now. So yeah. flip over to Firefox. You can be. Where's your? Uh, Oops. If you like this. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. So we're gonna create a uh, a user account, and this is um, another option you can set up whether or not you want to allow anonymous purchasers, or if you want to um, not. <laughs> Sometimes a login is a barrier to conversion. So if you're really concerned about conversion rates. You may want to take that into consideration. Um, and uh, okay, so he just got an error right now saying that no payment methods were uh, enabled. So that's probably our last step. Now he mentioned authorized.net, which is what we use on uh, the Rift Tracks website, and um, they're extremely reliable, really safe, and uh, there are other solutions out there. There's like CyberSores. Uh, you can even use PayPal with Ubercart, which is Important. If you don't want to spend the money on the authorized.net system, uh, PayPal is there as kind of a, a free option for you. Some users, some customers might, uh, yeah, free in quotes, uh, some users might not like the idea of leaving your site to go to and log into PayPal. So that's another thing to take in, into consideration what your bounce rate from then would be if users are no longer on your site. They might decide in that those couple login screens they have to deal with, they may decide that it's not worth it. And that's just the way the mentality of, of uh, users is, unfortunately. I think we need to. as high as a 50% difference in conversion rate by going from a forced login to a non-forced login. Yeah, so Mike just said, uh, for those that couldn't hear him, 50% difference between forcing a user to log in, your, your conversion rate drops by 50%, which is pretty significant, especially if you're a small store owner, um, owner of a small store, I should say, not a little person. Um, so, uh, so Magic Spark here is um, okay. You need oh, that's right. You need to set up a security key, and this is again, this is all pretty well documented in the Ubercart setup. So if you have any questions, you can ask myself or Mike. Um, Do you have to make a file? Yeah. So, in order to have secure credit card transactions, you need to um, set up an encryption key, which is hosted outside of your web root, kind of the same way the download files are. Are set up, and the reason being is obviously you don't want someone to uh, to be able to intercept those credit card transactions. You want to have that as secure as possible. So you can set up this server side hash essentially that um, tells Ubercart how to decrypt those credit card numbers, uh, email addresses, etc. Um, I don't think you can get to anything. Okay. Well, is there a way that we could at least demo that without transacting? But well, credit card test gateway requires a security key. You, so, um, are you doing this locally? Yep. Just um, make the app dot dot slash. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, trick. So you need to close that. There you go.
What do you say, dot dot slash root? Okay. Uh, Mike. <laughs> Kid, is there a way? It says you can't register directory. So, um. Just for now, just do dot slash. It's, it's dot permissions errors. Dot slash? Yeah. Okay. Don't ever do that in live production site. Because right. that means somebody will be able to read your encryption file. Yeah. Well. It's not working. Is there a way to, is there a way to run session. through the conditional actions without an actual transaction just to demonstrate how to how this would all play? I mean, because he's basically yeah, with it's with with how this works is, you know, you have Drupal, you have your products, and you have Drupal. I was going to do another payment type. Into a cart, and then you check out. There's all these sort of loops and acceptors. So theoretically, you could build a lot of this stuff without actually having your shipping set up for this or that. You could use it in order to really have a live production site and then put these steps in place. So what I wanted to to demonstrate today is uh, we could do this without too much config. I have I have an existing uh, e-commerce site. Uh -huh. And if I want to uh, migrate to the uh, user, you know, like we have all invoices, user data, and everything, uh -huh. and I want to migrate into Ubercom, is there an easy way? Is it like Zen card or something? Yeah, it's like Zen card. Um, it actually is Zen card. Yeah, well, I should do that. A way of, so the question is how do you do a Zen card migration? Um, what I would do first is I would look at your existing Zencart product line and see what product classes and attributes you may or may I not I think that's do. probably easy. Uh, yeah. To it up. What I'm more concerned is historical data is about the uh, user. Uh, uh, that I, don't, I, um, I I'll talk to you about that after because I want to make it. I think we're ready to go. Yeah, so we're running out of time, but uh, so Mike got the uh, encryption key generated, which again, is required for taking credit card transactions. And if you're only using PayPal, you won't even have to go through that step. Um, so let's uh, actually, where's your um, test one? user? Firefox. That was Firefox, OK. So let's reload. Oh, nice. Great. Okay. So um, you want to show them just buying everything? Uh, well, we create a new user, I guess. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so let's call this Bob Bungler. Okay. And the nice thing is, when you create a new user at checkout, um, the user information is saved, and all of the billing address, uh, billing information, and delivery information that he's typing in right now is stored with them. So when a user comes back, they can choose that from a drop-down list. The only thing that's not stored right now are is credit card information. As you might guess, one, two, three. It's kind of a security issue. You don't really want to store credit card numbers, um, which you might want to check. You know, talk about in the uh, store administration. When we're done. Okay. So submit. So submit the order. Okay. And un unable to send an email. That's just like a local issue. Uh, so if we were to, I'm not sure if we logged in yet. Let's just take a look here. Uber demo slash user. Okay, so we're not logged in yet, so we type in Bob, this password. And then if you look under files, don't. you would see it there if we got it to work, but that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, another like 10 minutes left. Just to further show how this can be done, uh, what if for this rock band site, in a, you know, they most likely would have like a user forum and you know fan club, but what if I wanted to have the email address of like, let's say, you know, Bob Bungler at Metallica.com. That could be a sold item. And so that would be done by having what's known as a user role as a purchasable item. And then you manage the permissions of that user role. So let's say if I'm, um, a, if I'm a, a user who's permission under the role of fan or super fan or uber fan, I can then be permissioned to have deeper access into the site or to make different content types or make con you know, content of various types. Mike, do you want to do the, do a quick demo on um, how to sell a user role? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. So it's we're gonna so we're gonna begin with um, do we need to enable any more modules for that or yeah um, so user roles are actually really cool and we um, 
It's one of the more popular things that we actually set up. Um, you can use it for a lot of things. Um, frequently, it's just granting access uh, for like privileged documents or um, you know forum access or something like that. We recently did something very similar to this and set up. Um, there you go. Here's your canal down. I think it's cool. Um, we set up a, a system for this company called Music City Networks, and they build sites out for bands and do all sorts of promotional stuff. And they wanted to be able to sell user roles for fan club memberships. And then the fan club members had certain perks. They got to see, they could register for tickets or buy tickets early. There was like a block of like 100 tickets that they could buy that nobody else but fan club members had access to. And they could sign up for meet and greets um, or have the ability to request a meet and greet and then like go backstage and meet the artist and all that fun stuff. Um, and we used Ubercart's ability to purchase a role for all of that. Um, I'm enabling UC Role, which is a product feature that allows you to buy a role. Um, so yeah, it's a really good system. Um, very useful. So once you have roles enabled, the first thing I would recommend is going in to your Drupal user management area and add a, a membership role. Dude, this Just mouse thing is driving yeah, me nuts. Watch out for the lower right corner. Got it. Um, Um, so, I just added a role. You'll see now on the permissions page we have this members column. Ah, okay. Ah. We have this members column. Um, once you have that set up, you need to go in and, um, and forgive me, I'm a little rusty in this. I haven't done it for a few months. But you have to go into the configurations. If I'm not mistaken... Um, first thing I want to check is see if there's any feature settings that you have to make. A lot of times when you enable a new feature, you have to go into the product features and then like modify it and stuff. Um, so role assignment settings. And so store administration, settings and configuration, product settings, because buying a role is simply um, a product feature. And you can go in here and do some some custom stuff. You can um, say that the default role we're going to sell is a uh, member. Um, and you can configure like how long it's going to last for and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to say that by default when we give somebody a role it's going to last for a year. Um, and save that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is go in and add a new product class. In product settings, or is okay? Thank you. Uh, I, I looked right at that, and I'm like, where is it? Okay, so new product class. We're going to call this membership. Give it a short description. And now we're going to go and... Yeah, can you? I'll talk and you. Okay, so, so go to um, create, content. create content. It's a membership. And add a new membership. So it gets all the same products that any other product, or same fields that any other product does um, title, body, 
put in a SKU at a price, and those are your basic fields, right? Um, once that's done, we're going to go down to the very bottom, and you're going to hit save and continue. What that does is it saves the product and then reloads the product edit page. Because when you add a uh, membership product, those tabs at the top don't actually appear until the product exists. And then you can go into the features, and you can add a new feature and do a role assignment. And then say when the SKU is member, or you can have it apply to any SKU. Um, assign the role, and uh, you should be pretty well set. Okay. So now the trick is going to be um, give the world see if this works. So here's this. Here we go. So go in, add the membership product, do a quick checkout. Um, right, cause that's the same. I go like this. Yep. Select from your existing information. And then four, one, and three of them. And then backspace three times. That's a good trick. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I knew about the. I didn't know what that counts. That was good. I would. I always always. Would have to yeah, I actually counting. got that copying, trick from Ryan. Just copying and pasting. Okay, submit order. And let's see if it. Oh. So. Okay, but, but but we can check. We can just now we can just go to users. And if we take a look at Bob. And Bob is a member. Check it out. Yes. Can, can you use this out of the box to do subscriptions to charge, like, say, Bob every month for their subscription? You can use the UC recurring module for that. It's still in the state of flux. It's um, awesome. It does work, I believe, for authorized.net. It's, yeah, it's also very dependent upon your, your merchant account and what, what you have set up. And if, if you use authorized.net, you'll have a lot more access to that kind of recurring payment. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. And that's a really good note that yeah. um, the, the big issue with recurring right now is, is this, um, it only works with certain payment gateways because every yeah. payment gateway implements recurring differently. Yep. Does it remove the role? Like, what's the... You would set yes, that up. once the role expires, so it's oh, it does it now, this role will expire, and on cron it will remove it. Oh, will it email them, notifying them? You can configure that as yeah. an you can, say, hey, yeah. send a notice. So, okay. Yeah. There's a UC Marketplace module. I haven't used it yet, though. I've heard it's pretty cool. Yeah, we, we use it. Uh, if you visit riftracks.com slash uh, Thank you. Yep. We basically have a section where users can upload files and then 